Hi, this is Craig from Startup Stories, and I'm here with uh, Michael from uh, Easy Employer to learn about his startup journey. Um, so, Michael, tell me how uh, you got into startups in the first place. Yes, yeah, so that's an interesting story, actually, Craig. Um, um, this, uh, well, I've been in business since I was 16. I just started fixing computers as, a, as an ABM, but this particular business was actually came out of a uni project. So, I was doing a uni project with a couple of mates, and um, um, as a software engineer. And the, and the idea came about, let's do an online roster s- s- solution. It wasn't actually my idea, it was actually one of my uni students, my mate's ideas. And um, we ticked all the boxes at uni, we got first class honours and all the rest of it. And we thought, oh, well, let's go and commercialise it and, you know, five, five years we'll be rich and all the rest of it. And we're going 10 years strong and still not. So that turned into um, just running it from my parents' basement. Um, just myself and him, and he actually pulled out six months in, so I was sort of a lone ranger for about six months. Yep. Um, and then basically got James as one of the other directors and got my sister Ari involved, and then it sort of grown from there. So now we've got um, you know, a team of 17 employees and six contractors split across um, Canberra and Melbourne, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a pretty great journey actually. Yeah, yeah so it's been over about 10 years, yeah, the journey. Yes, oh, cool. this is the 10th year at the moment. Okay, yeah. great. So, so you know, I guess it was an idea that came out of university, not mm. yours. What made you decide, you know, first class honours, mm. you're going to pursue this idea rather than, you know, going and working for someone at huge IT contracting rates? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question, actually. Um, look, I've always had a, a passion for business and also a passion for working with people to try and make a difference. It's one of, it's one of my, my key passions and and um, always been really interested in the startup scene, but just business in general. So um, there were offers coming out of uni, also getting first class honours, kept the options open with that. Um, but having this great idea and, and seeing back then in the market, there wasn't actually anything that we could find that was cloud-based, it's 10 years ago, yeah, um, that did sort of rosters, timesheets and payroll. We saw that as being a massive need for a lot of organisations. So that was, we looked at that and went, all right, you know, let's give it a crack. Um, and, and, and that was sort of, I mean, we lived lean, you know, I remember my sister giving me a loan for a year to sort of live off just a part-time job and do this, you know, 78 hours a week for the first two, three years. So it was hard. And there were many times where you had to question, you know, why why am I doing it? And sure there's going to get another job and all the rest of it. But I think just my, my passion, desire and enthusiasm, persistence probably just kept me yeah. there. Yeah, because yeah, it must have been also pretty tough when you know your mate who actually came up with the idea decided to go off and do something else, and you were left there for six months. How, how was that? How did that feel? Yeah, that was tricky. That was tricky. The hardest part about that was we actually got a grant from the AST government. Um, that's not the hardest part. The hardest part was that he was actually the main developer. Mm-hmm. I was sort of developing like our application on the side that did sort of fingerprint scanning and the rest of it. He did the main web application. And so we had to borrow a whole bunch of money to hit the first milestone and he sort of left at that point. So I had to dig in, learn all this code and finish off the milestones. Otherwise it would have been 25 grand in debt because you had to borrow the money, hit the milestone and then pay it back. Yeah. So that was a really tough few months. Like that, that was sort of 90 to 100 hour weeks there to get to meet those milestones. That was, a, that was a big sort of crunch point. That was sort of like, look, do I actually pursue this or do I just buy a book and go get a job? Yeah, and um, you know, thankfully, I decided to keep pushing through. And, oh, cool. Yeah, so it was tough at that time, but mm. but yeah, the, the persistence just kept me going. Cool. So, what have been some of the challenges you sort of encountered after that? You know, initial, uh, I suppose, yeah. year of hell. That's yeah. Like Look, um, the business has been this. This business is like a roller coaster. We've, I've, you know, I sort of fell into it a little bit. Like I said, it wasn't my idea, um, and I've grown with it. So it's it's actually a really difficult market, complex industry. Lots of competitors crowded, and we're a product and a service, so we do everything. We build, we service, we deliver, we support. It's um, it be, it's a roller coaster. It's been an absolute roller coaster every single week. It's been lots of challenges. I mean, having to grow a team from zero to seventeen, um, really underestimated what was involved in that, yep. and how much of the people side of of, a, of management that you had to actually have. And being quite an introverted character, a lot of those qualities are actually very difficult for, for me to learn. Um, it was challenging to deal with people. I always found it difficult um, to do pitches and all the rest of the public speaking and all that sort of stuff. It's always been hard for me. I remember the first, when we get a new like uh, salesperson on here, I tell them the story about when I was doing sales demonstrations. I reckon the first 10 sales demonstrations I did, I didn't get a sale. I'm yep. pretty sure I fucked all of them. I was so focused on just the technical side of things, that's how my brain works, that uh, they were just, I just bombed out every single time. 
And so there's a lot of things, and there wasn't the support around small business like there is now. No. You know, like, you know, Startup Community in Canberra and all the government stuff. And there was some funding here and there, but you, you didn't have a resource like you had now. So a lot of it was just, we just winged it. We just, we just pushed through. And uh, I must admit, being a little bit sort of young and naive definitely helped, I think. Yep. You know, um, I had a lot of self-confidence back then. And, and um, I, wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it arrogance or anything, but there was a lot of self-belief. And a lot of that, ta- that takes a hit as you go. For yes. anyone who is going to jump and take a, and start a startup, um, there are a lot of challenges that you face that really test out your self mm-hmm. confidence and 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 your your ability, your resolve, your your resilience to to, to continue. And they were all really great lessons um, to to overcome to get to where we are now. I think yeah, for the whole right. business as a whole, not just myself. So, Michael, what are some of the things you've learnt along the way? Yeah, so look, there's been a stack of things, Craig. I think um, um, investing in your people, building a great team. Is probably is probably the biggest thing I think I've learned overall. Um, knowing that you can't do everything yourself and, and you do need other people to help you out has been has been a key thing. Um, leveraging um, relationships, building strategic partners has been a massive thing for us, and just being a lot more strategic. I mean, when we started, we were very scattergun. We would just go and accept any client, chase any client. We could I used to knock on doors, go into restaurants, and try and sell the system that way. You know. Um, we've adopted a much more strategic approach now through partners, bookkeepers, accountants, business advisors, just looking for um, channels, you know, that sell to the same sort of companies mm-hmm. that you're trying to target. Um, that's, that's been a, a major sort of learning curve and a key part to our, our successes so far. Um, what else have I just, just sticking at it. I mean, um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to experience the lows to appreciate the highs, um, which, yeah. is, which, is, which is so true. Um, also, something that I find still very difficult to do is just stopping to smell the roses. Yes. You know, actually just sitting back and going, hey, look at what we have achieved. And let's actually have some enjoyment out of that and celebrate that. Mm-hmm. I'm very focused on what's the next thing, what's the next thing we have to do. And I have to consciously force myself to actually stop and appreciate what we've achieved. Even if it's just today, this week, last month, um, over the last 10 years, whatever it is. Yeah. Take some it. time to, yeah, to, to, just to sort of appreciate that and also getting the whole team together. To appreciate yeah. well, so well, they say celebrate your successes. Yeah, you know because often you know you're so focused on the next thing, you actually in startups in particular you ignore you yeah. know sort of your successes, and and that does lower your resist you know your your resilience over time. Sure, but like one of the things you you said you had went set up ten sales presentations without a sale. <laughs> you know what did you learn through that process? Yeah, well, I'm not sure I converted my 11th either, but I mean, what you what you learn, uh, what have I learned in that process? So, uh, you you really got to f- focus on the other person. I mean, building building good relationships, learning to build trust and rapport. It's all geared around getting to know other people, um, understanding what makes them tick, understanding what their key pains, even their motives. You know, what's their agenda as well. You know, there's so many components to it, but being able to actually connect with them, it's not, it's not about you, it's not about your product, it's not even about your services, it's about what you can do for them. Yeah. And that's, that goes for anything in life, I think it's not just business, but it's about you know, what can you actually, what value can you add to that person? Um, and, and to the organisation to a degree, but you, you're selling to a person. That's what a lot of people don't understand, you're not selling to the company, you're selling to the people that are in the room. Yes. You know? So if you can connect with them and, and give them some faith that you can actually help them, um, that's the key to doing good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I presume you don't do the sales anymore either. Ah, uh, I still I still do. Yeah, it. yeah right. absolutely. Yeah. That's Look, right. I um I do a, I spend a lot of my time on business development, um, mm-hmm. which is more sort of at the strategic level, um, with more strategic relationships. But some of the some of the deals that come through, like the larger ones, um, I'll get put into. I still do demonstrations. So right. if they're if they're high, really high value ones, the BDMs will um, will bring me in just just to have that punchy hour hour and a half demonstration and just hit all the key points and they'll close the sale. So I quite quite enjoy that. Still I still get nervous for every single interview I do, every single meeting, every single demo. Uh, I can't get rid of that. I never will. Um, but um, you learn to deal with that. You sort of learn to just sort of run with it, embrace it, and um, and and you start to enjoy it after a while. I, I yeah. have so. Yeah, no, that's great. You know, play to your strengths. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's probably been one of the key parts of our journey that's been really, really important, really, really exciting is 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 the journey has progressed where we've had to fill different different holes. You know, it's gotta be what's 
people's greatest skill sets. What, what are they most skillful at? What are they good at? What do they enjoy doing? And what creates value for the company? And trying to put them there and building gaps or filling the gaps around it. Yep. So getting to the point now where you know I'm not operational focused anymore. I don't, you know, I could be away from the business for a month or something. I went overseas last year for, for five weeks to year around Europe, first time ever. I'm that's 30, 32 years old. That's perfect. You yeah. Know, you build a business. You've got it. You've got the right people. You've got the right system, so you can actually take yourself out of it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Great. Yeah, that's right. And everyone else here as well. Like as the directors move into different roles, it's about. How do we how do we how do we scale how do we scale effectively and and, and key personal reliance has actually been actually one of the big challenges that we've had is you know being small and especially because we run multiple businesses in one you know we 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 build we sell we support they're almost like little departments and you know you lose someone or someone's sick for a while it takes a huge debt and it's only really now with you know, a team of 17 people spread across the three major departments where we have enough redundancy. So if someone does go and leave, or if we have to let someone go, someone leaves, it doesn't really, really critically impact the business. Yeah. Um, and it's taken a long time to get to that stage. I mean, yeah. good processes and systems are key to that, but having the right people and keeping them passionate uh, and motivated is, is kind of, cannot be underestimated. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what have been some of the, the wins and, and high points over the last 10 years for you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very focused on what's next. And so it is, I often have to coach myself into actually going through this exercise uh, myself. Look, I think building, you know, we've, got, we've gone through a number of people to get to the team we have. We've got an awesome team now. Um, and I think any successful business needs to have one. But being in a position to actually um, lead an awesome team is a success. And, and I'm incredibly proud and inspired by it the team that we've all built, the other directors, the managers, right down to the staff. Like, so that's been a really key success. Um, another one would be building a path to success in this market. I mentioned we're in a very difficult space, very complex, we're a very, very complex product that solves problems and makes it easy to use. Anyone who's ever built a product, to build something that is really powerful, that's really easy to use, is bloody hard. It's extremely yes. difficult. Yes. Okay? To put every bell and whistle on the product is easy. Anyone can do it. Lots of lots of organisations have. So, uh, taking that product, building that product to maintain that philosophy and also build a niche in a huge market with lots of competitors, that's taken years to do. And that's that was really difficult. And it's definitely a success. You know, where we've now, I think we've gone from nine staff to seventeen in eighteen months. Um, so that that shows that we've sort of hit a really key point in the market. Um, and that's definitely success. That's, that's really been difficult to achieve. Um, helping the results we get for our clients. You know, mm -hmm. we're, in, we're in an organization where we can actually see the results we deliver to our clients and, and, and they're measurable. I mean, we've got some case studies where uh, just recently one of our pharmacy groups, they've got 20 locations, about 400 staff, they reported back that they saved 12.5% of their annual labor over a year. Wow, okay, that's that, huge. That equated to one and a half million dollars. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, it's massive, you know, um, and that's allowed them to now launch and scale, they're gonna franchise and all this other stuff. Some other case studies you've got in like a, you know, a mother who had to, had to spend eight hours doing rosters on a Sunday afternoon. We get that down to one hour. You know, yeah. they just save nearly a whole day yeah. on a Sunday for her to spend with her kids or whatever. So that whole concept, that 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 passion of mine to actually make a difference. I know this is a very small business in the scheme of, you know, if you talk about trying to change the world or things like oh, that. But but you've got to start somewhere and just the satisfaction out of seeing, you know, the good news stories that you bring to clients. I mean, you gotta say that's the biggest success. You know, that, that brings you a lot of satisfaction to see that. No, Keeps right. you going. So, so what would you tell other people, you know, who wanted to set up their own business? You know, it, even if it's not their idea. Yes, yes. Look, I've, I've, it's funny because the first thing that's in my head there is, um, would I do it all again? Because it's been many times. <laughs> that was my next question. Oh, okay. that first. Yeah. Um, oh, I often, I often doubt it. If you ask, if you, if you do ask me that, my first reaction is, oh, would I? Um, look, I love a challenge, um, and this has really tested me up personally, mm -hmm. and also the other people in the organisation. And you know, we're coming through the other side pretty well. So. Uh, if I was to do it again, you know, the benefit of hindsight, uh, I would I would probably choose a different industry and a different product and whatever. So I think I think I'd be able to choose a much easier path. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, this is this has given us all the tools to, to be able to you know maybe with the next business be able to know what that easier path is. To anyone who's who's, who's wanting to start out, um, give it a go, give it a crack, and 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 do it as soon as you can. Um, if you've got the comfort of being in an existing job and you can start something on the side. To minimise your risk, absolutely do that. 
Um, the, thing, the, the, the greatest disappointment I see in, in life around me is, is people who don't give things a shot. Yep. You know, and eventually it becomes too late um, and you never get a chance. And, and you know, I didn't want to regret um, you know, not um, giving it a shot. I'd rather, yep. I'd rather you know, stuff it up and go fix it up. I mean, there's a part to the story where my sister convinced my parents to borrow a whole bunch of money against the house to, to give us an wow. injection to bootstrap yep. this thing, right? Or bootstrap to a degree that we had that injection. And, and um, if, if she didn't jump in and give that advice, we wouldn't be where we are today. She basically said to me, she goes, look, do you want to fizzle out and die or do you want to give it a good crack? You know, and she goes, what's the worst case? You know, it doesn't work out. You get a real job, you pay it off over two or three years, between the three years. And that, that was what convinced me to do it. So if you can, if you can bootstrap your business so you don't need that great, um, but often, especially in cloud technology, you need to get some cash from somewhere. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's the triple Fs, the friends, family and fools, which might happen to be, um, or it's an investor or whatever, um, you know, that's got to happen at some point. But you've got to you've got to start and just start somewhere. You know, the ladder is one step at a time. A grain of sand at a time makes a beach. You've got to start somewhere, and you've got to you've got to believe. You actually really got to believe in where you want to end up and and, and be passionate about what, what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. But then that that's just that's all you need. Then you just got to keep taking one step. And often you don't know where you're going. You know, we've pivoted so many times in this business, and we're now in an industry um, of disability care, which is going to boom for us. I can see. Mm. And, um, and, and if we hadn't just taken all those steps, we wouldn't have got to this place. Um, as Steve Jobs says, you know, you, you, you can only connect the dots backwards. You, yes. You don't know yes. where you're going. You don't know the full when you dots. go back and you go, oh, if we didn't do that and didn't do that and this didn't happen and that. And, and it's actually quite interesting to look back. We've already got some of those stories now. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there's another five or ten years where, you know, we'll be able to do the same. So you just, you just got to be persistent. You know, it's 1% idea, 99% persistence. Yep. Yeah, and you've got so you've got to be you've got to have that drive. If you don't have that drive, you struggle. But you know you got to just start somewhere. And you've got to believe in the idea. Like clearly, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's actually you're an interesting situation because it wasn't even your idea, yeah. but you took it on. You took the ownership, sure. and you believed in it, and actually drove it through. That's uh, that I think is an even harder challenge than if it's your own idea. It's a good point. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. Look, I'm not the most creative person around, but once I once I work, once I have that idea, once someone gives it, uh, you know, I can I can run with it. But there was I did have belief in it, just mm. even though it wasn't my idea. I did I did believe that we could make success out of it. And I did believe it could make a difference. Um, but still, um, you know, you, yeah, you do really need to believe, and and it's going to get tested. There are going to be times where you're going to lose the faith. Um, and you need to come back to that initial belief and that initial passion. And that's why if you can surround yourself with great people as well, people have been there and done that or just in a similar position, it's almost like, you know, when you, when you go to the gym, you have a gym buddy and you do it together and you edit each other on. It's the same thing in business. Yeah. You know, I've got, I've got a couple of relationships with people who've been older than me, uh, who are great friends now who have taught me so much. You know, a lot about what I know is through those relationships. Um, and oh, I don't know where I, where I would be if I didn't have that support to help me as, as I go through. So that's the other thing, you gotta find mentors. You know, it doesn't have to be Richard Branson, but just someone who, you know, is wiser than you, who's already been and gone, <laughs> gone through as close to that yes. as possible and leverage off them. I mean, I looked for mentors, I mean, I looked for cloud enterprise software, who in, even in workforce management like we do, and it was very hard, we're in a very niche sort of space. So a lot of that I had to sort of just win components of it, mm. but just knowing other people who have grown and scaled businesses even in other areas, there's just invaluable lessons you can learn. Yeah. You know, the stuff you learn from them that you just, you can go your whole life and not learn. Yeah. So yeah, really important. Yeah, well you're very early to it as well in the cloud, so there wouldn't have been a lot of role models around 10 no. years ago or even no. seven or eight years ago really. No. So that's a that's a, a that's a pretty big challenge. Are you mentoring people yourself now? You look a little bit here and there. Um, nothing sort of formally. Um, I have thought about sort of going back to the unis and trying to help out. Um, this business is still is still pretty pretty critical and demanding in a critical stage and demanding a lot of my time. So I haven't quite made that jump yet. Yeah. Um, but that really excites me. Like I, mm. I love sharing my knowledge with others and and helping others where I can. Um, so that would definitely be something. Um, I see myself doing something like that later on, just not sure when. Yep. Um, but yeah, I would have loved you know someone to come along. I mean, I couldn't even get a job as a, in software. I was I was working doing internet service provider to, to help desk and all that stuff. So I couldn't even get a software job, you know. Um, and so now, I mean, we, we employ a lot of younger guys straight out of uni and stuff like that. 
I'm always looking for new talent as well if anyone's out there. So I, I love the idea of giving someone a chance and we've done that many times, also expats and stuff like that because I, I, couldn't, actually, I didn't, couldn't even get that chance. Yes. So if you can give that to someone else um, and you'll find that the right people uh, respect that, acknowledge that, mm-hmm. appreciate that and pay it back to you. And we've got some great staff members here who we really on paper I took a massive gamble with and have invested a lot in them and they're working out brilliantly. You know, the loyalty's there. So so yeah definitely can to get involved with that at some point. Oh great. Well, well thank you very much for your time today. Look, well, you've had an awesome journey and I guess, you know, not quite a, a garage, a basement instead. Yeah. But um, you know, I suppose you also had part of the house invested in you as well at one point. <laughs> That's right. But you've made a great success of it. So I wish you all the best. Uh, with your company into the future. Yeah, great. Uh, Thanks a lot for the opportunity, Craig. We're looking forward to seeing the other stories as well. Yeah, great. Okay, cheers.